Welcome back, Booksmiths. My name is Angie, and here on Bite Size Booksmith, we explore the intersection of creativity and AI-assisted writing. Today's video is a follow-up to one I did recently, Unlocking Taboo, Make a Not Safer Work GPT in Novel Crafter. In the video, I walk you through the process of creating a custom GPT in Novel Crafter that allows you to come up with story ideas for your favorite genres and subgenres. If you haven't watched it yet, and you are struggling to plan stories that include sensual content or violence, I recommend starting there. There are three main topics that I hope to cover in this video. First, how to create an outline without using a pre-made plot. If you recall, I used a story builder template from TNT Author Service in the original video. One viewer requested a video on how to make one from scratch. Next, how to get a better outline out of Novel Crafter. Some of the feedback that I received from the video was that everything worked great with the GPT, except for when it came to the outline. I'm hoping that what we're gonna to cover today will help to strengthen the generated outlines. Third, I wanna show you guys how to create custom categories inside of Novel Crafter. That question came up a few times, and while I covered it in the Notion document, I'd like to show you how to do it live as well. As with most of my more complicated videos, see the video description for a link to this Notion document. In the document, you'll find a walkthrough of some of the more popular plotting structures, prompts, and additional resources that I use with my writing. One last thing before I get started. I've also included timestamps in the video, so you can get to the parts that you're most excited about. Now, let's dig in. We're going to start first by going over some theory, and then we're going to dive into Novel Crafter to test out our prompts. I will tell you that when I started with AI-assisted writing, Getting a decent outline and converting it into chapters and scenes was the most difficult part of the process for me. It took quite a bit of trial and error for me to finally get it. And I hope this video and the prompts that I provide help you to get it much quicker than I did. Let's begin by looking at some different types of story structure. You probably learned about these in school, or if you're like me, it's been a while. I definitely have my favorites, so I'm probably gonna focus more on those. But we've got the three act structure, the four act structure, which I bet you can guess it has four acts. There's also the five act structure. Now we're going to come down here to save the cat beat sheet because that one is my favorite. I've used save the cat back in the day when I was writing by hand and coming up with ideas and not using AI. It's actually got 15 beats and it was created by Blake Snyder and it's a formula for creating stories for screenwriting. Usually you're gonna use it if it's a comedy, a romance, or an action story. Now I wanna go ahead and point out right here, I've got this plot grid that I created and you can come through here and Gemini opened. Go away, Gemini. You can come up to file and then you can make a copy of this and it will help you keep track of all of your beats and which scenes apply to which beats because there's some beats that can only have one scene, such as the theme stated. Also, the catalyst usually also break into two. And there's also other beats that can have multiple scenes, such as the setup, the debate, fun and games, bad guys close in. If you aren't familiar with Save the Cat, I highly recommend getting a copy of Save the Cat Writes a Novel or Save the Cat Writes a Young Adult Novel by Jessica Brody. I own both of these books. They are fantastic. So if you decide to try to write and using this structure, definitely look into Jessica's books. There's also several websites dedicated to Save the Cat. There's tons of videos on Save the Cat. Okay, so we'll move on to Romancing the Beat. Gwen Hayes wrote a book called Romancing the Beat. And I put a little note here, if the LLM tells you that it knows the structure for Romancing the Beat, it's lying to you. It does not know. I've put some resources here you can go and download. There's a Scrivener template as well as a PDF template if you don't have the book. Or you can just get it from the book and just type it out. And then this book here, Nell Alexander, How to Write a Short Romance, is actually a modified version of the Romancing the Beat, beat Sheet for insta-love romances. So I, I recommend it if you are focused on romance. Now, lesser dent pulp fiction formula. This is primarily for writing 6,000 word pulp fiction novels, but the formula is fantastic. I went ahead and listed it all out here for you. And there's also here an article 
from a uh, first draft pro that walks you through it in a, a lot greater detail. We've got the hero's journey, which I think pretty much everyone's heard of that. Derek Murphy has a 24 chapter novel outline that he created. It's more for fantasy. It is related to the hero's journey, but it's just a little bit different. Same with Dan Harmon's story circle. He actually created it for character driven TV shows. So whereas a lot of the other plotting methods and story structures are more dedicated towards the plot, Dan Harmon's story circle is more character driven. There's also Jamie Gold's romance beats, which I link to as well. So I have included three methods for how to prompt for your story outline. I've got a simple method. I've got my Christmas story method. I have to credit Feature Fiction Academy for because that's where I learned how to do it. And then also I've included one from Mira Gold. Okay, folks, here we are in Novel Crafter and we are in a series codex for a world called Lorehaven. This is definitely something that I want to walk you guys through how I created this. But this actually came out before the custom categories came out. Really quick, before we get diving into working with our prompts, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of different custom categories for our codex. So I've got tropes. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to come to custom categories. And I'm going to actually add one here. We're going to call it tropes. And we'll make it green. And trope will be the tag. And let's go ahead and add another one. I have, looks like, let me close this. What else do I have in here? I have got some for one of my characters. I have their communication style. I've got their emotion style, their inner monologue style, and their physical appearance. And then to make sure that the, those are attached to her, those are listed as references. So they're nested references. Let's see. Got a bunch of tropes. What else do I have? Oh, I also have different mythical beings. So we'll put, what do we want to call this? I'll we'll call it races. I don't know if that's the word I want to use. Actually, need to have that impact the entire series, not just that race. I don't feel like that's the word I want to use, but let's just leave that there for now. We'll come back up here to a trope, so we'll add it to the series as well. So now if I go through, fairies are, oh, it's actually race, not races. There we go. Now, if I scroll up here, you'll see races and fairies. So workplace romance, that one is a trope. Witches are a race. Werewolves are a race. And let's see suspense. I sent that as a trope. Now I have a story structure in here. And it looks like I actually put in here one of those story structures from TNT. We're not actually going to use this. We're going to use probably Save the Cat. I'm going to pause real quick and then I'm going to go through and put these all in the right categories. Okay, I've got those all organized and there's actually two more categories that I want to include. I want to add book, books, it'll be for the series. That one is, the tag is a book. Let's make that one purple. And I should only have one of those right now. And then the last one that I wanted to do is actually series because this is for a specific world. This world will have multiple series and each series will have multiple books. And that's the way that I created it. So we'll go ahead and put series, make it pink. 
It'll be a series scope, and I will put series as the tag. There we go. So now if we scroll back to the top, we can see I've got books, races, series, and also our troops. We've also got characters already. We've got locations, and we've got lore, and then everything else here is tied to either a location or a person, or we've got that story structure that I had planned to use in this series. Okay, so we're going to use the simple method of coming up with a story structure for this book called Coded Charms. So I've got tropes here. I've got some themes. I've got butter. Butter is from a uh, seven figure fiction. So it's part of the universal fantasy. I've got a log line, a synopsis. And then I also ma went and ma made sure to reference. So I've got a mention of the Alara Institute, alpha males, the tropes and the town and the two characters. So my hero and my heroine. Yeah, this was a long time ago that I did this, and I think that it was actually when we were in beta. So things have changed quite a bit since then. So let's go ahead and go to chat. And I was actually testing this out yesterday to see if it would work, and guess what? It did. So we are going to edit this just a smidge. I want to go ahead and use chat GPT, chat GPT Turbo, but I am going to use the Paranormal Romance InstaLove Developmental Editor. So I will use Turbo because I don't plan on putting anything in here that is going to trip it up. So please turn the Coded Charms. So now it's calling in that codex entry. Please turn the Coded Charms premise into a novel outline using the Save the Cat Beat Sheet structure for the urban fantasy genre. Technically, it should be a paranormal romance. So I'll go ahead and change that. There we go. I'll go ahead and hit send. And it's going to work through the 15 beats. Okay, great. So we have our opening image, theme stated, our setup, catalyst, debate, break into two, B story, Fun and games, midpoints, bad guys close in, all is lost, dark night of the soul, breaking the three, finale, and our final image. So I did include, if you're interested in writing subplots, I included that in my experience. It works sometimes, it doesn't work sometimes, so you might have to be a little bit more proactive with your subplots. I'm going to go ahead and move on to, since this is an insta love paranormal romance, I'm going to say that it's going to be, let's say, 11 chapters with an epilogue. Okay. Then please turn this outline into a chapter list covering all 15 story beats. A story beat can be split over two or more chapters if appropriate. Okay, let's go ahead and see what it does. Okay, there we go. So it actually 
I gave us 15. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so it didn't listen. And if we weren't, I think, at least, okay, I said at least 11 chapters plus an epilogue. So it it said that, it decided that it was going to do 15, including the epilogue, I believe. Nope, with, okay, 16 total. The epilogue is separate. Uh, be specific. I can't tell you how important it is to be specific. Okay, so let's try doing it a different way. Okay, back up here to chat, and we are going to go use my FFA story method. And it's going to have to be, I'm going to have to edit this just a little bit because I had planned to do this in chat GPT, but again, chat is being a little silly. So here we go. Use the outline style as a guide to write a 13 chapter outline plus an epilogue. Using the story information above, which we don't have, we're going to have to do using the story information for coded charms. Please write me an outline. So let's see if this works. This one I did not try. So this outline is a little bit more for maybe a thriller than a romance. I, I could have been more specific and told it, hey, we were writing a paranormal romance, but I didn't do that. So here we go. It gave us, in the little brackets, we lovingly call these containers. So we've got our chapter one, our chapter two, three, four, all the way down to our epilogue. I'm actually impressed with how this came out. Okay, now let's see if we can use the Miracold's method. So the method from Miracold is actually step five. I recommend using steps one through four to get to this point. But what we're going to do is I'm going to ask the chat GPT and it actually it put us back in a general purpose. I would like to be in the instant love developmental editor. There we go. That might have been why our last one was a little bit generic. I don't think I made sure I was in the right prompt. Let's see. Please give me the premise and character list for coded charms. And I think by having this spelled out already, it will help with Miracold's. Okay, great. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab, it's rather long. Here we go. And I will say I have not tried to run any kind of code in here before, but we need to make some changes. So our story is a, we'll say it's an 11 chapter. And 11 chapter paranormal romance. There we go. And I can, we can just leave it as it is an 11 chapter paranormal romance story. Okay. I want to create a chapter by chapter outline that follows the Blake Snyder beat sheet, identifying the catalyst, the debate, and the save the cat moment. Okay. And it's going to alternate the POV between the protagonist and the love interest. Fantastic. And each section must contain 10 beats in number form. Now, down here, 
It talks about incorporate red herrings like you'd find in the Lester Dent mystery template. Remember, we talked about Lester Dent earlier. And you can go ahead and read through the rest of this. The only major other thing that I need is here. I need to make sure this is 10, and it is. Uh, if you wanted to do 14 beats, you can do 14 beats, uh, but just make sure that you change it here as well. I think we are all good here. And let's let it go. Let's see what it does. Okay, it is working. So it's giving us the date and time, the characters, the setting, the character's voice, as well as the tone. And then it gave us 10 beats. These are very anemic beats, but it gave us 10 beats. And it ended on a cliffhanger. Okay. And it went ahead and it did. So we got chapter one and we got chapter two as well. So chapter two is from Ethan's point of view. Chapter one is from Blair's point of view. Okay. So since it stopped, say continue with chapter three. And let's see if it continues. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so it looks like if you want it to continue, you're going to have to prompt it one at a time. One thing I like about this, though, going very slow, is that you can have a conversation with whichever LLM you're talking to. And if there is anything that is vague, such as contemplating the unusual patterns in the code that should be possible, what are those patterns? A mysterious error message. What does the mysterious error message say? If you leave them, if you leave these beats as lean and anemic as they are, you're going to end up with prose that's just not great. It's going to be very bland, very boring. So I end up spending probably most of my time, once I get my story idea fleshed out, I spend probably more time working on my outline and my beats than I do anything else. But here we go. It worked. And if you check out Miracle's videos, there's actually quite a bit that happens after this. And I believe in that series, she was in pseudo right. It looks like we can also do it here in Novel Crafter as well. Okay, folks, I think that is all for today. I hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. I know that I have so much more I want to cover. I think I'm just going to literally have to start creating some courses for you guys to go through and just share all of the stuff in my brain because there's just not enough time in the day. The things that we covered today were how to create an outline without using a pre-made plot. So taking all of the information that you've already developed about your story and applying a plotting structure. And you can refer back to that Notion document that I provided with the different structures. I showed you how to come up with a better outline inside of Novel Crafter. We used ChatGPT4. It's, as long as you don't have any not safe for work content in the, in the outline itself, you can definitely use ChatGPT. I would recommend using maybe a Mistral Medium if you're going to be doing something that has either sensual or violent content. And I also showed you guys how to create custom categories inside of Novel Crafter. Again, I created this codex way before custom categories were a thing. So it was nice to be able to jump in there and set this up. If you guys are interested in learning more about the series codex that I have developed here, it's actually a world codex. It's not even a series called codex for this with multiple series inside of it. Let me know. It's been a little while since I've done it, but it was a lot of fun to create. And I can't wait to maybe write this someday. 
It'll be fun. I think we're going to stop here. And so leave me any questions you have down below it, the video in the uh, comments area. And I will get back to you guys. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I'll talk to you soon.